What's going on, everybody? Good afternoon from the rinks in Irvine, California, home of the 2021 Narch Finals and day number three. Well through the first part of it, and that means we've got some updates for you on the Pro Division. I'm Nick Ismani, alongside my partner, Jeremy Ellis. Uh, some exciting games to get things started off, so what we decided we were going to do is come on and have a little conversation with all of you about what we saw in these quarterfinals, get you all set for the semifinals. And then after those are over, we're going to have another conversation with you and move back with a post-game wrap-up. But let's get right into it because we had some intense action uh, right from the very hop. I want to start off with Roller Dad News and Black Ice, a 6-3 to three victory for Black Ice to punch their tickets. How about the shots on goal? 52-28 to 28 for Unified Black Ice. You know, I had no idea the shots were like that until I uh, just saw that graphic because we were glued to the glass of the other game on the other side we'll talk to in just a second. But... Black Ice, we talked about how they like to possess the puck. I think they uh, got sucked into a run and gun game here. They proved they could score and they can put points up on the board. Six to three to score. Roller Dead News was giving them a little bit of a scare early on and they kept it close and then I think Black Ice just they were able to pull away at the end. Yeah, well, 52 shots, certainly the factor in that one. Black Ice moves on. We'll have their matchup for you in just a moment, but Jeremy Ellis sat down with Tyler Kraft following the Black Ice's win and ticket punch to the Celtics. All right, we're here ringside. Jeremy Tyler Craft. Tyler, just a big win just now over this RDN team. Talk about RDN real quick. A little upstart team. They gave you a little bit of a scare in the beginning. Yeah, uh, last night we played them. You know, we had a good game against them. But uh, I knew coming in today that they were going to have a different mindset. They uh, they won a big, uh, the 8-9 game. They beat Rink Rat. So I knew they were going to come in with some fire. And they did. They skated hard. They played well. And a couple bounces would have gone the other way. It could have been a different outcome. So possibility of playing two games a day. Your next is to be determined because you got to wait and see the outcome in this game. Any preference on who the next opponent might be? I mean, you're in the semifinal, so you got to play somebody good. I mean, it really depends. I, I don't really have a preference. I just want to play hard. I want to win the game, and then we go from there. All right. Well, congratulations on the quarterfinal win. Good luck later on tonight. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Tyler Kraft of Black Ice. They are moving on. Good stuff from Jeremy, good stuff from Tyler. So Black Ice moves, moves on in a uh, significantly lopsided offensive push, and that takes us to our next game, which was Rink Rat taking on Mars Blade. This one was one for the books. Rarely have I seen a scoreless game through regulation in roller hockey these days, but this was that. Roadrunners, Roadrunners. Rink Rat got knocked out last night. Not to uh, correct you, but just want to make sure for the folks at home, don't think that's a mistake on the board, but Roadrunners, uh, Mars Blade, how many times have we seen a 0-0 game go to overtime, Nick? Not too often, right? Uh, not too often, and very rarely do I make a mistake on a team. But thanks for having my back on that, partner. <laughs> the Road Runners outshot oh, Mars played 16 to 12, but it was an exciting game, and it took it went the distance in overtime as well. It was and, late. Uh, yeah, it, was it went really very late. late, just a few minutes, and they actually took a moment to stop. A little temperatures, a touch warm, so they had a minute to to gather some more water, gave them a timeout, and then as soon as that break was over. Uh, uh, that's where the uh, that's where the victory happened. Yeah, I mean, you were waiting for uh, you know one team to make a mistake and lead to an odd man rush, and it was just a situation where the puck went down the corner for Mars Blade, transitioning back the other way, and it was, it was a trailer. Jordan Mullen. It's funny he talked about in the interview how he scored never scored on Redmond before <laughs> ever. So what a big time and. and opportunity for him to get that game winning goal in overtime. Troy Redmond, a fantastic goaltender, but as you said, Jordan Mula with the game winner to send the Roadrunners into the semis. This is what he had to say with Jeremy Ellis after the game. All right, Jeremy Ellis on the ring. Just concluded an overtime quarterfinal game, and I'm here with the hero of this one, Jordan Mula. one nothing game. Jordan, is that one of the biggest goals you've ever scored? Uh, it's definitely the biggest goal I've scored. Uh, I've been lucky enough to play with these guys all my life, and uh, I mean, that's definitely the biggest one right there. I've never actually scored against Redmond, so there's my first for me. Wow, a lot of firsts in that one. All right, so let's break down that goal, a quick transition there. What did you see when you took that shot that uh, decided the game uh, there was a defenseman in front of me just had a nice screen just took a quick shot and hope for the best and I mean it worked out for us all right Jordan you're gonna watch you don't know who you're playing in the semifinals yet but get some rest you could have two games left to go uh, to go today good luck the rest of the way thank you very much all right Jordan Mueller your hero and a one nothing victory for the Roadrunners over Mars Blade So a big one there uh, for the Roadrunners as they defeat a very talented Marsblade team. You gotta love the uh, 
the, the energy that you're getting from Jordan Mula, and you have to put them in the conversation uh, heading into the semis. Well, here's the thing. Jordan Mula, you're sitting there on the boards. We were talking about it. Everyone's picking who's going to be the hero in that game. Jordan Mula was an afterthought in that discussion. Sure. If you want to start talking about Roadrunners, you're thinking DiMartino, you're thinking Halverson, some of those top guns. For Jordan Mula, not only to get a, a goal like that, but his first ever time scoring on Redmond, that's huge, and that's the type of goal that you need on your way to winning a championship in March, bro. So the uh, next quarterfinal that we had was Palma Silver Knights taking on the Skittles. And a lot of people around the rink kind of referencing this, this, this new look Skittles team, this young group of California guys as a, as a new look velocity almost, uh, that same kind of energy. And they take on a Palma Silver Knights team that has some pretty interesting characters on it uh, in their own right, including a former velocity guy, Darren Nowick. Uh, and Palma Silver Knights come away with a 4-3 victory to punch their ticket into the semifinals, despite getting outshot 21-15. Yeah, well, it all comes down to Tyler uh, Gonzalez. I mean, in that game, he had three goals. He's a difference maker in that game. Skittles, I mean, they were down 4-2. They made it 4-3. They had the goalie pull with about a minute and a half left. Yep. And uh, the one thing I will say about Palma is when they iced the puck down, they went down there and put down immediate pressure right on that Skittles team. They didn't let him go retrieve the puck and bring it back up on a free clear there. So doing that every time was able to shave away some time. That was big because Skittles just ran out of time there at the end. Now, so much of roller hockey these days is about that possession game and that patience, almost like that neutral zone trap we saw in New Jersey run back in the late 90s. But Jeremy had a chance to catch up with Tyler Gonzalez. This is what he had to say following the win. All right, we're here on the rink after the Palma Silver Knights defeat Skittles 4-3, to and no bigger player in that game than Tyler Gonzalez with not one, not two, but three goals, a hat trick for Tyler. Tyler, how'd you get it done here today? You know, the boys have been playing good all tourney. Uh, two great goalies in that, Team D, and I, I was able to get a few lucky ones in front. So at the end of the game there, they pull the goalie. You guys are just trying to hang on. What do you guys have to do to keep the puck out? Looks like you're putting a lot of pressure on keeping the forecheck on them late in the game. Yeah, a lot, a lot of skill guys on that Skittles team. So, you know, hap, catch off to them. But, uh, you know, we were getting in lanes. That's big. Helping Blake out when down the stretch, that's going to win hockey games. So so semifinals coming up. Looks like it's going to be Pama on Pama. How's that going to be? A little awkward. No, it's great to see both both teams doing so well. And, uh, you know, we love to grow the sport. And uh, we're, we're excited to get, get after it. All right, congratulations, quarterfinal win. Good luck in the semis. Thank you very much. All right, Tyler Gonzalez, three goals in this quarterfinal game. So we'll have the full matchups for you in just a moment, but with Palma winning the Silver Knights, uh, that 4-3 to three victory over the Skittles sets them up to take on the big brother of the Palma Golden Knights, who had a 2 to nothing win over Connix. And the interesting thing about this was is that from the start, you can see the offensive domination here by the Palma La Beta Golden Knights. 30 to seven, the shots on goal. Connex was looked at as potentially a little bit of a sleeper, but I changed them. The goal, you did, you did, you said that earlier today, but the Golden Knights came in so hot and fiery on this one. And here's the thing, you've got so many elite players on this group, former NHLers like Steven Alexi and Max Comtois, who's a current NHLer for the Ducks, coming off of an unbelievable year. He was their leading scorer this season in the NHL in an abbreviated season. But you can see that the, the professionals took over in this one, and a uh, 2 to nothing victory seals their fate to match up with their little brother, the Silver Knights. The big thing in this one, 30-7 on the shots, Connix was one and done every time. There was no rebounds. There was no second chance opportunities. Meanwhile, the Golden Knights, they were in there just pounding away, getting rebounds, getting scoring opportunities. Anytime you outshoot a team 30-7, not only are you playing good defense, but you're controlling the pace, the tempo of the game, and keeping good puck possession as well. Well, a 2 to nothing victory sets up a Palma Palma semifinal. You'll see Black Ice uh, taking on the Roadrunners in that second one. We're going to preview that a little bit more later, but... We talked a little bit about the talent that is on that Palma team, and certainly one of them is a long, long time friend of mine back from in Detroit when he was just a little guy rolling around Joe Dumars' field house. Stanley Cup later and a pretty impressive ice career, I got to sit down and catch up with a good friend of mine, somebody I'm very proud of, Stephen Alessi.
Here on Narch Live, Nick Gizmondi, and it is old home week for me because it's a bunch of guys that I'm extraordinarily proud of that I feel like I've known since they were tiny little guys that have gone on to have unbelievable careers. Stephen Alexi, one of them, uh, a Detroit guy who I've been watching since uh, you were just a small fella. But back at Narch here in California, let's start there. Just the emotions of, uh, of roller hockey and your connection to it and, and, and being a part of Narch. It's awesome. I mean, you know, a lot of roller hockey relationships that I've developed have, you know, carried on throughout the years and carried over into ice hockey. And then obviously, Narch was what really got me into roller hockey. When you look back at the old Narch events um, and you look at the logo still, you get the chills, right? Uh, growing up from the Detroit area and when Narch went through, everybody knew. You know, the whole Dumars parking lot yep. was uh, Memorial Day weekend. Was Memorial Day weekend. That was. That was what we were doing. Things have changed a little bit now. We're on the water Memorial Day weekend, but uh, but no, it's it, it, it's been great and it, it, it teaches you a lot about uh, a lot of ice hockey aspects as well. Right? And that's you know, there's so many guys. Uh, you obviously had a very successful NHL career, a uh, very successful ice career, all, all in. Uh, how much of the roller game truly did help with the ice game? Because I'm a roller hockey guy as well, who's also an ice hockey guy, and I preach it all the time. I'm constantly saying the benefit of playing roller and getting that vision in the off season to, to help contribute to the ice game. I think it's easy to speak on, you know, the skills you develop through roller hockey, right? The patience and, and, and the fun control that, that comes with the roller hockey game is a little bit different. Uh, you know, the man on man, right? It's defensive responsibility. But I think the, the other side of it that's often overlooked is, is, is the mental side. And playing roller hockey is a nice release for us ice, ice hockey guys. Uh, especially as you get higher and higher, you face a lot of pressure with your game and, and in the sport. So to be able to play roller hockey where it's a little bit more relaxed atmosphere and, and, and you're around a lot of people that you've been seeing for years and you have fun, it's kind of hits the reset button mentally for, for us as players. Uh, I think I know the answer to these two questions, but I'll ask them anyway. Uh, if you could pick the, the top moment from, from all the time you spent on the ice uh, playing professional, what would that one be? Very, very, very tough. Um, it's it's easy to say your first NHL game. Uh, that's something that I'll always remember. Um, I think anybody who knows me, I'd have to throw my first NHL goal up there because I, that's uh, that's the toughest thing about the sport is scoring, right? So uh, for me to sneak one in there was obviously a very memorable moment. And then having a, a, a very special, uh, very special uh, occasion in, in Pittsburgh was, was something that would, would go up there. So those are definitely the top three for me. And not just to speak on the NHL side, but um, leading up to it, it was a lot of ups and downs, and, and it really made those three stand out. Uh, a, a humble dash of the Stanley Cup champion, but it's uh, an incredible thing, and it's certainly something that not a lot of people get to say, and especially as a young guy growing up in Detroit, uh, I think a pure hockey town. For you to be able to achieve that, an ultimate dream, the number of times you have win the Stanley Cup in your mind uh, at sleep at night or in the street playing hockey or even playing roller, uh, what, what, what was that moment like when you finally had that in your hands? I think for me, it was extremely special growing up where you know Pittsburgh, Detroit went back and forth yeah. in those Stanley Cup finals sure. and, and, and to watch that and you know, I was so far away from my end goal at that point that never did you think it was really, really going to happen, right? And obviously that is a goal and, and you work towards that, but um, being so far away and then you fast forward, you know, not too, too long later and then you're on a Pittsburgh team that wins the cup, um, it kind of comes back full circle, you know, and, and, and for me it was, it, you grew up with the Red Wings team, so obviously very, very successful for yeah. a long time and winning was kind of the way. Um, and then to put it into perspective, going into the finals that year in Pittsburgh, I think our three coaches had 67 years of experience in the sport. And between the three of them, it was our first Stanley Cup final. And then, you know, that was we played Joe Thornton for San Jose, right. who is obviously somebody who's who's been in it for a long time, very, very successful as an individual and a, a number of successful right. teams. That was his first time in the NHL finals. So, um, that really put things into perspective for me, and to be around that with such an extraordinary group of guys, and um, you know the whole organization in Pittsburgh is 
it, it, it truly is a family, and it gave me a sense of what an organization is supposed to be like. I could talk to you for probably a couple of hours, but I'll, I'll give you a couple more here. How about a roller? Uh, you've obviously got some big moments there, too. You still play the sport. You, you've played it most of your life. Uh, is there a moment that stands out for you in roller hockey? A big memory? A big memory? Yeah. I think one of the one of the biggest memories, um, you know, was as of recent, it, and I think people often overlook how hard it is to win in roller hockey, too. Uh, coming into t- to tournaments, it's, you know, the, the caliber of the players and ice hockey players are going to be that. It's a very, very hard sport to win. And you know, when I tell people about, about roller hockey and the number of people who ask me, it's, it's a chess match. Yes. I, I'm sure you can probably speak on this. Back in the day, it was 13 to 9, and it was yes. back and forth, run and gun. Yes. It's, it's really changed, and, and, and we talked about it a little bit previous on this conversation. Um, it really teaches you how detrimental every little pass and every mistake and, 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 and that can be. So um, as of recent, I've won a couple championships, and, and that's always a good feeling. Um, so those are those are some memories that stand out with me. Um, you know, you can go back to the home care days and, and, and the old team mission days, yep. and um, yep. you know, being a part of that, and then being a part of the USA Roller Hockey team was you know for two years there was something that you know at that time I was going through a lot of my ice hockey career, and then to, to be able to represent your country in the sport of roller hockey and be around you know you know you meet. Play with guys like Ernie Hartley. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Ernie on that one, eh? Oh, Ernie. Uh, but you, you play with those guys who are, you know, who are legends of sports. CJ Yoder, and uh, that that also carried over to my ice hockey career. Because it, it was at a point where I was looking for some confidence, and, and I gained that through roller hockey, which is which is a special time for me as well. Two more for you. Right now, you're running uh, you're running some summer leagues with some pretty high caliber guys. You're still attached to the sport in that way. How's that experience been for you? You enjoying that? Very much so. Uh, we're, we're 14 years in for the, for the summer league, and a number of guys in our summer league are roller hockey players. So it's it's funny to to leave home, fly across the country, and uh, go from ice rink to a roller rink and see all the same faces <laughs> smiling. So yeah, it's 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 very very rewarding to you know back in 2008 started, and then to see all the guys who a number of guys. I mean, we speak on them. They're here at this tournament with Alex Kyle came to us when he was you know a AAA player, and then he went juniors, and then obviously University of Michigan, and, and then he goes pro. And I actually played his first pro game against him. <laughs> So I stood right at the red line and let him know I was waiting for him. But uh, his first game in the American League, and you see those guys have success. And um, not that it's all us, but to give them a, a, a competitive place to play in the summer, and you feel like you're a part of that, which is which is extremely humbling for me. Here at the Narch Finals, uh, a quarterfinal victory. Uh, Palma obviously having success. They are so close to coming away with with that ultimate goal of winning a, a, a Narch Pro Championship here in the finals. Uh, you face each other off now. The two Palma teams in the semis. <laughs> how do you how do you conjure up the intensity there? I think there's a lot of people that were looking forward to that match, and, and at least one of us is making the finals, right? So. Uh, I mean, the Palma organization has done a number of great things for us, right? And, and you look back and we talked about it, it's very, very hard sport to win, right? So, you know, the last couple of years, it's, it's been hard for to make the finals. And, you know, we get a chance to match up against a lot of guys that we're because we have to make the chips well. Um, and then it makes it easy. If you ever battle the roller rink, you'll see, you know, the whole organization bouncing from, from rink to rink. Now everybody can, can keep an eye on both teams. So it's going to be a great matchup. And, and, and I think, you know, both of our teams have surprised some people this weekend. And, um, it's it's going to be a fun one. That's for sure. From the time you're a little guy till now, I've always been very proud of you, and I always knew you were uh, you were something special on the rink and off it. And it's awesome to sit down with you, and it's awesome to see uh, all your success. And it's certainly fun. Well, that goes both ways. That goes both ways to watch you throughout your career through the old Hockey Weekly and, and, and everything. <laughs> Sorry to date you. That's so Sorry great. Sorry to date you, but so uh, great. but uh, but no, and, and, and it's those relationships that make the sport really hockey guys hockey. Thank you for taking the time. Steve-O, proud of you. Appreciate it. Love you. you. Steve Oleski, you'll see him later on. Uh, the semifinals coming up, but we'll have more of Narch Live right after this. Absolutely uh, love the opportunity to catch up with him uh, and get the style on that kid, right? Oh, on the wrist, on the head. I mean, he's got the 
complete package. Well, yeah, for sure. Yeah, complete for package. Sure. Uh, and, uh, he's got a big hockey game coming up here in just a few minutes. See if he can punch his ticket to the finals. Semifinal number one already underway. Let's show you what these matchups are one more time. That game between the Roadrunners and Black Ice just began. Palma Palma coming up at 2.50. We'll be joining you just shortly after that to preview the final. That'll be tonight at 6.45. We'll see you prior to that with a wrap-up of the semifinals. For Jeremy Ellis, I'm Nick Gizmati. Thanks for watching Narch Live. Back with you shortly.